It's showtime. Your attending hands you this EKG and asks you to read it. My first tip is to look in the upper part of the EKG at the computer's read, which is usually pretty accurate. However, if your attending has covered the computer's read, you will need a method for interpreting EKGs. There are many different methods and you should choose your own, but I will tell you mine to get you started. My method is to evaluate these things in this order. Rate, rhythm, axis, intervals, and morphologies and ST segment changes. Let's go through what this means one item at a time. First is rate. To measure the rate, look at the so-called rhythm strip, which is usually at the bottom of the EKG. Now count the number of QRX complexes all the way across, and because I know this represents 10 seconds, I just multiply that number by 6 to get the rate for 60 seconds. For example, here there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 QRS complexes. Taking 16 and multiplying it by 6 gives us a rate of 96. This method will work even if the patient has an irregular rhythm. An alternative method is to count the number of big boxes between R waves and count down as follows. 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50. What this means is that if there is one big box between our waves, then the heart rate is approximately 300. If there are two big boxes, then the heart rate is approximately 150. If there is three big boxes between our waves, then the heart rate is approximately 100, and so on and so forth. In this EKG, you can see that the rate is just slightly less than 75. Once you have calculated the rate, less than 60 is considered bradycardia and greater than 100 is considered tachycardia. So that's it for rate. Now let's focus on rhythm. You should be able to identify sinus, which is what we call a normal rhythm, or not sinus. Just like with rate, use the rhythm strip to look at rhythm. To be sinus rhythm, each P wave should be followed by a single QRS complex as shown here. Notice P wave followed by a QRS another P wave followed by a QRS. And if you look all the way down, you continue to see each P wave followed by a single QRS, giving us a sinus rhythm. If each P wave isn't followed by a single QRS complex, or if there aren't P waves or QRS complexes at all, then you're not in sinus rhythm. After determining the rate and rhythm on an EKG, you want to determine the axis. In order to do this, you look at two leads, AVF and 1. When looking at these leads, ask yourself for each lead if the QRS complex is mainly positive or mainly negative. In other words, is the R wave more positive than the S wave is negative? Let's look at lead 1 first. Here you can see that the QRS complex is mainly positive. Now let's look at AVF. Again we see the QRS is mainly positive. When 1 and AVF are both positive, it is considered a normal axis. But what does that mean? Now we'll use this circle to represent a simplified version of a heart, divided into four quadrants. Remember that lead 1 measures the electrical depolarization in this direction, and AVF measures the electrical depolarization in this direction. If both are positive, the net depolarization of the heart moves somewhere in between and this quadrant of the heart corresponds to what we consider a normal axis. Now, if the QRS complex of AVF is mainly negative, but one remains positive, that means the net depolarization of the heart moves in this direction. We call this a left axis deviation. Similarly, if the QRS complex of lead 1 is mostly negative and AVF is positive, 
That means the axis will point somewhere down in this quadrant. And if both 1 and AVF are negative, the axis will point somewhere in this quadrant. Both of these last two scenarios are considered right axis deviation. Personally, I work out the axis every time using the logic I've just described to you. But if you don't want to work out the axis every time, you can memorize this table. After determining the axis, the next thing I look at is the PR interval using the rhythm strip. As described in a previous video, the PR interval should be less than five small boxes or one big box. Let's look at the PR interval here. Eyeballing it, you can see that that distance is slightly less than this distance, which is one large box. So in other words, the PR interval is not prolonged. Next, moving from left to right, Look at the QRS duration. It should be less than three small boxes wide. And we can see here, just again, eyeballing it, that it is less than three small boxes wide. Continuing to move from left to right, the last interval to check is the QT interval. An easy way to determine if the QT interval is prolonged is to see if the QT interval is more than half the R to R distance. And again, just by eyeballing it, we see that the QT interval is less than half the R to R distance and thus is not prolonged. In this video we've covered the rate, rhythm, axis, and interval steps of reading an EKG. In the next video we will cover morphologies and ST changes. Here are our take-home points for this video.